We're here at Ifa with Sony's QX10 and QX100 lens cameras. What's a lens camera, you might ask? Well, a lens camera is essentially a compact camera's specs and photo taking abilities crammed inside a single lens, which you can then connect to a phone via Wi Fi or NFC. We're going to take a look at these products. QX10 and QX100 are compatible with both iPhone and Android phones. All you need to do is download Sony's Play Memories app from a relevant app store, and then you can get snapping straight away, so long as you connect the camera to your phone using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It's quite a simple process. I've done it myself, and all you need to do to actually physically connect the camera to the phone is use this little mount, which is connected to it, and that feels pretty sturdy, even if it is a little bit top-heavy at the top where the lens is. Priced around the £200 mark, the QX10 lens is the cheaper of the two lenses, and that means basically it's one you're more likely to buy as a stocking filler over Christmas. It's got a 10 times zoom and an 18 megapixel sensor, which means it's more suited to people who just want to take a quick snap of a memory and then leave, rather than someone who's going to want to perhaps frame it up on your wall. The QX100 is the more expensive of the two lens cameras, and basically what that means is it's targeted at someone who perhaps would rather chuck this in their bag in a more compact guise than, for example, a DSLR camera. It's the equivalent of Sony's compact RX100 Mark II camera, and essentially what that means is it's got a 20.2 megapixel sensor and a wider aperture, so it's going to give better quality photos than the QX10, especially in low light. So that's Sony's QX10 lens camera and the QX100 lens camera. I quite like them both, especially because they connect to not just Sony phones. They'll work with your iPhone or any compatible Android handset. You just have to download the relevant app. Whether they're taken as more of a novelty Christmas present or something that's going to have any staying power is up for debate. I personally quite like them and prefer to take one of these around with me than a compact camera. I'll certainly be looking forward to you results. You can find out yeah. more about this fantastic offer by clicking the link in the description. The Wi-Fi would disconnect and the QX10 would still be filming. Even when you reconnect, the only way I've found to stop the QX10 from filming is to press the power button on the camera. The final image is usually much better than the preview, but will throw you off when you're initially using the camera. With the app, you can also transfer pictures from the memory card and the camera to your mobile device for sharing, although it transfers a lower res preview over Wi-Fi. To get the full res photos, you will have to take the memory card out of the camera and transfer using your computer. Interesting note, even though the camera is connected to your smartphone, the photo apparently does not save GPS location data, which may be a reason to, for some to get a Wi-Fi connected camera. You may think after hearing all that, that there's nothing really good to say about this camera, but as a camera, I have to say that when you have good lighting, the pictures and the video actually look really good. Much better than the smartphone camera, even on par with many low to mid-range point-and-shoot cameras. In low light, or indoors, a steady hand is needed to take sharp pictures because the camera will take longer to focus and shutter. Also another thing to consider is that there is no flash. So the pros for the QX10? The picture and video resolution actually look really good for the camera at this price point. The remote operation, tripod mount, using standards like micro SD and micro USB charging, and the replaceable battery. For the cons? The Wi-Fi lag is inconsistent and can be pretty frustrating. There's a long startup time. The lighting on your device's screen is not a good indication of the final photo. Especially in low light situations, the handheld shots can be blurry. Battery life is something you also have to be aware of because it will be using Wi-Fi and you will be draining both the camera's battery and the mobile device. For me, this would fall on the specialized application category like the sports cameras such as the GoPros. What you do get over the sports cameras is an image without the fisheye distortion and an optical zoom. I get the best results from leaving the camera on a tripod and remotely using a mobile device. If you do need to go handheld, it was more reliable to get a good picture using the shutter on the camera as opposed to the LCD screen. Seeing how the remote features have some quirks to still work out, I'm gonna to have to give this a don't buy. I am, however, excited to see what Sony's gonna do with the second generation of these, if they come out with a second generation of these. Um, I would love to see a small LCD screen so that you can see the images immediately. 
um, while carrying around this camera. I'm Victor from Twit, and this was my review of the Sony DSC QX10.